Good morning, family. God, good morning. God bless you. Welcome back to the Morning Devo. It's your bro, Sam Lopez, a.k.a. DJ Sam Rock. So winners with a Z.org. Celebrate our network. Live. So winners with a Z.org. All the networks that we're on the podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in, downloading those podcasts and downloading those messages and those morning devos and everything that you do, that you connect when you connect to this ministry. I'm really grateful um, to God, first and foremost, that he allows me to do this. Amen. For another day. Uh, tomorrow's not promised. And uh, that reality really hits home, man. When I uh, just think about uh, how life is flying by so fast and so quick. Amen. And um, how you know, just life is going, man. That's all I have to say right now. But today, we're going to talk about something that it's common to most believers, um, but it might not be understood as much as it is common to believers, if that makes any sense. We're going to be talking about how to respond to grace. Grace, the grace of God, God's riches at Christ's expense. Some people, you know, I'll break it down with the G R A C E. God's riches at Christ's expense. Grace, the grace of God, the undeserved grace of God. How about that? Um, people get saved, right? We get born again, and only through the Lord Jesus. Um, but my question is, how do you respond to grace, right? And his follow up question is, how were you saved? Amen. Um, people think they're saved just because they go to church. People think they're saved just because they read the Bible. People actually think they're saved because their grandfather, their grandmother, um, their father, their mom, or their you know siblings are, are going to church and they're born again. And people think we inherit this salvation. Um, I don't know where that came from. Uh, I'm here to tell you that's not true. Amen. Salvation is through Christ and through faith in him alone. Amen. Through the grace of God through faith in Jesus, by grace alone. Amen. And it's undeserved. Uh, Jesus found a way to bridge the gap between man and God because there was a bridge that no man could cross by themselves to get from where we were to where God is. Jesus is the bridge. Amen. He's the doorway. He's the path. He's the righteous one. He's the anointed one, the only begotten son of the living, holy, righteous, loving God. Amen. And I give him glory for all of that. All of that. Amen. Right now. Amen. Sister Joanne, I see you. Let me get to your good morning message. Good morning to you as well. God bless you. Welcome so much uh, for being here with us. Amen. I'm so faithful um, when you come on here. Amen. And I don't take that for granted. Um, you're a blessed woman, a blessed sister in God and Christ. Amen. And I thank you so much for connecting with us uh, every time we go live. Pretty much. Right. Thank you so much. We're going to be in Acts chapter 15. Um, verse number 11, Acts chapter 15, verse number 11. One of my favorite books in the New Testament is Romans and the book of Acts. Amen. Um, because the book of Acts is how the apostles, the ones who uh, were following Jesus, the one who uh, were inspired by Jesus and now filled with Holy Spirit. Amen. How they responded, the first century church, how they were responding to grace, how they were active in their ministry, how they were active in their faith, how they were um, being used by God to show his grace, his mercy, his love, his authority, his power. Right. Um, they were going about healing people, um, healing the sick, uh, giving sight to the blind, uh, giving, um, you know, deaf people hearing. Amen. All because of the power of Holy Spirit, God the promised Holy Spirit that they waited for in the upper room. Now they're filled with that same spirit that rose Jesus from the dead and they were going about doing God's work on this earth. Amen. And there's still disciples here. Amen. Uh, possibly apostles. You know, a lot of people have issues with calling uh, people apostles. They think that um, everything died with the first apostles. Um, and I don't believe that. I don't believe miracles died with the first apostles. I don't believe salvation died with the first apostles. I don't believe the gospel died with the first apostles. So therefore, I have an issue with that. But, you know, that's not what I'm here for. I'm not here to debate that. I'm just here to read the word. Acts chapter 15, verse number 11. How do you respond to grace? We have, we have a part to play in this whole gospel message, right? We have to respond to it. We don't respond to it. We just listen. We just learn about it and we never apply it. Then we're just playing ourselves. Plain and simple, man. We're not doing anything other than um, being a spectator. And I, I don't want to be a spectator. If, you, if you're playing a sport, amen, and you're just watching it, um, that's cool. But it's a difference 
between watching something and being a part of something. Amen. Uh, watching a game or being a player in the game. And in the kingdom of God, amen, I think it's time for us to stand up, especially as men of God, to stand up, raise our hands, and let people know who we are and stop hiding. And for my sisters in Christ, the same thing, amen. You don't need to hide. Don't be ashamed of the gospel, amen. Tell people who you are in Christ uh, because everybody else is coming out with what they want to come out with, amen. So we don't need to hide. So respond to grace, Acts chapter 15, verse number 11, amen. Let's go for it. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or any prayer requests, never hesitate to leave it on the live chat, amen. Uh, I rolled out something else as well. You know, I'm always rolling things out, amen. And in the background, and if you're on my email list, how do you get on the email list, Sam? Go to live.somewinnersworthaz.org and sign up. And you'll automatically be on my email list. And I'm going to send my email list uh, something that's really powerful, that we can stay connected um, through not social media, not just email, but through a phone text. And it's a community. It's a big community. And it's really engaging. It really helps. It really helps people in their path and their walk um, when it comes to things of anxiety, depression, um, all kinds of situations and issues come together through a text, through a community. Amen. I'll roll that out um, later on. It's already rolled out. I'm already in it. I'm already active in it. Amen. But I want you to know about it soon as well. Amen. So let's go for it. Let's pray first. After we pray, we'll share this out for like 60 seconds. Then when we come back, we'll jump into Acts chapter 15, verse number 11. Ready to pray? Amen. Father, I thank you so much that you, Lord God, have shown us your grace and your mercy and your love through what your Son, your only begotten Son, the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, has done for us already so many years ago. And that same power, the same love, the same grace, the same mercy is available to every single person right now that is willing to surrender their lives to you, Lord Jesus to your love, to your grace, and to your mercy. I thank you, Lord God, that although this grace is undeserved, you found a way to bridge the gap between man and God. You found a way to reconcile man back to the Lord, back to the Father. And I thank you, Lord God, that we become sons and daughters of the living of the living King and the living Lord when we respond to your grace, when we are activated by your Holy Spirit, when we are part of your community, part of your body, part of your faith, Lord Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for what you're doing, what you continue to do. I pray a hedge of protection over myself, over my family, my whole bloodline. Speak, I speak health, strength, and protection. Amen. Over my mom right now who's going through a situation. Over my uh, my brother in Christ, Benny, Avila, the Avila family. Avila family. I pray over them as well, Lord God. I pray over the Rivera family right now, Lord Jesus. I pray over all the families that connected to this ministry years ago and still stay connected to us in Jesus' holy name. I pray, Lord God, that you will continue to support them, guide them, guard them, show them your glory, magnify yourself in their hearts and their minds, and that, Lord God, they would know how to respond to your grace. I pray this by faith, knowing that you hear these prayers and you answer them according to your plans and purpose for our lives. And those who agree with this prayer, we all say amen and amen. So respond to grace, Acts chapter 15, verse number 11. Let's take a minute to share this out. Help me share, share, share. If you know people that are not on social media like that, um, this is good on YouTube right now. DJ Sam Rock is the name of the YouTube page. Um, Live.someone is with a Z.org. You can share those links. Amen. And then, of course, share um, those who you know that's on social media, share the social media links as well. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast. All the details, the link is in the description of this video. Amen. I'll be right back after 60 seconds. And when we'll get right back on the other side of these 60 seconds, we'll jump into Acts chapter 15, verse number 11. Get your Bibles ready. I'll be right back.
Amen, amen. We're back, we're back. So let's get into it. Let's see what the Lord has for us today in his word, his inspired word. You know, people are continually um, thinking they have a strong argument by telling me and letting me know or responding like this. How could you believe in a book that was written by man? Unbelievable how that is supposed to be an argument. Every book that you read and that I've read was written by a human. Uh, God decided to use men, inspired men. He breathed into these men his spirit and inspired them to write down what they wrote in the Bible. I don't know what the issue is that people have. Oh, I don't believe a book that was written by man. They're liars because they believe in every single book that was written by man. Whatever they believe in came from some kind of literature, some kind of understanding that was written and passed through the centuries. So I don't understand if that's uh, maybe I'm overlooking something, but people really think that's an argument that shuts down Christianity. But it doesn't. Let's respond to grace, though. Let's respond with kindness and with grace. Amen. To those people who think that because the Bible was written by men, that it's full of errors and contradictions. And by the way, when people say that, oh, the Bible is full of errors and contradictions, you could kindly, with the kindness of your heart, say, can you show me one contradiction? And I guarantee you, um, they'll show you, if they know some, they'll show you some very common ones, misunderstood ones, amen? And there's no contradictions in the Bible, but they'll show you some if they're studied about it or if they if they learn something about the scriptures, but then none of those contradictions, so-called contradictions, are valid. Amen. Let's go for it. Oops, I forgot to put this on on the right way. Let me go back here. I'm a little bit in front of myself. Get the screen ready. All right. Here we go. Let's get into it. Respond to grace. Acts chapter 15, verse number 11. And the Bible says here, inspired by Holy Spirit God, we believe that we are all saved the same way by the undeserved grace of the Lord Jesus. Now, I had a question, right? How were you saved? How were you saved? And what I mean by that, according to the scripture, I believe that we're all saved the same way. But we're not saved the same way in life, if you understand what I'm saying. I was drunk and high when I got saved. And I called on God. I didn't call upon Jesus because I didn't know who he was. I just had an idea in my mind that if there is a real God and he had the power to change, I really didn't care about everybody else, to be honest, at that point in my life. I wanted to see if God could change me. So I was saved by way of drunkenness and being high. And in my situation, God came into my situation met me where I was and granted me this undeserved grace of the Lord Jesus, not even knowing who he was, not even knowing who God was, not even believing in him. But he responded because he heard my heart's cry for change. He heard my heart's cry for help. He heard my heart's cry for transformation. He heard my heart's cry for life because I was a dead man in my sins and transgressions. But he gave me a new life. So when I ask the question, how were you saved? Is basically I'm asking your testimony. How did you get to a point where although the scripture says we believe that we are all saved the same way. But obviously it doesn't mean that we all lined up outside of a church. We all said a prayer that's really the same. And we all got saved the same way. We are all saved the same way according to the undeserved grace of the Lord Jesus. Amen. So the Bible is not saying, you could quote me on this, that we all are in uniform, that we all get saved the same way. In other words, that we all did it the same way. We all came to God the same way. That is not what the scripture is saying. The Bible is saying right here that we were all saved the same way by the undeserved grace. What Jesus did for all of us was undeserved. His grace, God's riches at Christ's expense was undeserved. But yet Jesus, because he's love and God is love, amen, and he is God, he demonstrated his own love and his own grace and his own mercy in this, that while we were still sinners and that while we still hated God, he still, regardless, 
died for us. That's undeserved grace. And we if we could just capture that in our hearts right now and understand that, man, there's going to be some radical change in your life today, starting today. Say, man, I don't deserve this, but God made a way for me to receive and to respond to his grace, to his mercy, to his love, to his life, to his sacrifice on that cross. It's a big, big scripture right here. I know it's like short, amen, what we just read, but it's huge if you really think about the scope of your life and in my life, of my life. If it not had been for the grace of God, you probably heard people say this because it's true, where would we be if it wasn't for the grace of God? Where would you be? Where would I be? Well, obviously, in my testimony, I'd be doing the same thing. Can high smoke, alcohol, violence, sex, drugs, and violence. You know, it would have been the same old, same old. And people right now are still trapped in that condition, not realizing that they are. Because you couldn't tell me in those years before Jesus came into my heart and into my life, you couldn't tell me that there was a problem. You couldn't tell me I was having an issue. You couldn't tell me I was doing something wrong. As a matter of fact, I had a friend of mine, Amen. During that time, literally come up to me and say, what's wrong with you? And I said, what do you mean? And then he laid it out. He said, man, you're doing this. Your wife left you. You're living in a house with no heat. Um, and he laid down the whole list. And I just looked at him and said, what's wrong with that? Because I was lost in the sauce. Amen. But when God gives you eyes to see, because this world will blind you, your own evil, sinful desires will blind you to the love and the grace and the mercy of God. And the enemy will supply these false needs that you think you need. He's actually not supplying anything. He's actually just applying your own selfish, evil desires, and he's making them real in your life. And you're following after your own desires. And he knows, the devil knows, since he's the father of lies, he knows how to trick you into believing that that way of life is the right way to live. In other words, he's taking what's right, what's wrong, he's taking what's wrong in your life before Christ, and he's calling it right. That's happening right now. If you look at society, everything that's right, people are saying is wrong. And everything that's wrong, people are saying is right. And the scriptures prophesied about that in the old covenant and in the new covenant. Amen. The scriptures about that. But we respond to grace because we have testimonies. We were not the same. I wasn't the same today as I was 22 years ago. If you met me in my teen years, in my early 20s, my late 20s, all the way till I was 31 or 30, you already know. You know the situation. I don't even have to prove nothing. Some of the people on the street says, yeah, it's verified. We were out there. We were out there, and I can't deny it. That's why I never forget where I come from. People say, why you walk with a limp? I don't walk with a limp. I literally walk the way I walk. Why you talk the way you, why you act like you're young? I'm not acting anyway. This is the way I am. Amen? So I learned early in life, God didn't change me to be a religious person. He changed me to be who he created me to be originally. And what happened was I got tripped up, confused. I got deceived by believing that who I was was enough for me, but because of his undeserved grace, when I responded to grace, to the grace of God, amen, he literally said, okay, I created you to be this, that, and the third. I am not going to change your personality per se. He says, I'm going to change your heart. I'm going to renew your mind, renew your spirit, and give you the heart of Christ, give you the mind of Christ. And the heart and desires were changed. My heart and my desires were changed by living holy, righteous, loving God. There is no other explanation to what happened to me in my life other than God being exactly who he says he is according to the scriptures. Respond to grace. You could do that today. It doesn't have to be, you don't have to wait for an evangelist to lay hands on you. You don't have to wait for a pastor, apostle, prophet, right? A teacher to lay hands on you to receive this grace. You can literally do that right now in your own time. In your own way. God knows your heart. 
So, you know, I, I wanted to do things structured. Like before Christ, I wanted to say, how, what's the formula of getting to God? And that really confused me because I was looking at all kinds of religions. I said, well, they worship their God this way. You know, Catholics do it this way. Christians do it this way. Mormons do it this way. Jehovah Witnesses do it this way. You know, Pentecostals do it this way. Um, so it was confusing me. I was like, who's doing it the right way? I think we were all doing it the wrong way. Amen. God demonstrated his love. We're not demonstrating love. God demonstrated his own love. The Bible says his own love. It doesn't say God demonstrated the love of man. He demonstrated the love for man. We got to, you know, the word is beautiful. The word is accurate. The word, when you speak it out of your own mouth, it really renews your mind. When you speak this word out, amen. Acts chapter 15, verse 11, speak it out. Remind yourself of what God did for you and what God did for me. Amen. We believe that we are all saved the same way. Not not we didn't come to Jesus the same way. We are saved the same way because Jesus and his grace was undeserved. Amen. Yet he offered it to us. He gives it to us because he loves us. There's no other explanation. Oh, uh, people would tell me, Sam, you were always a good dude. You know what I'm saying? You just... You just got gooder, if that's a word. God bless you, Brother Al. <clears throat> Welcome to the Morning Devo. You get gooder. Good is not a word, but you know what I mean. And I was like, wow. If, or, or they say this. Oh, you didn't really change. You just came to your rock bottom. Then you woke up to the reality of who you really were. Listen, I couldn't change myself. I didn't have an identity. God gave me an identity through Christ. So my identity is in Christ. Your identity is in Christ. Look at his life. See how he lived. See how he responded. See how he reacted. See how he was full of kindness and grace and mercy. And also see that he was no joke. He was a man's man. A man, king of kings, lord of lords. He walked upon his earth without spot or blemish. He was perfect. He is perfect. Without sin. But what did he do? Undeserved grace caused him. A man not made him, caused him because he is God. He is love. Caused him to take the punishment upon himself. The sins of the whole entire planet, whole entire universe. He put it on himself, yet he himself did not sin. That's undeserved grace. Why would God do that for me? You know, for many years, the reason, one of the reasons why I didn't come to the Lord, because I was like, I heard the story over and over again since I was a, a you know, youth, like in elementary school. We used to go to religious studies. And so we got kicked out. Me and my sister got kicked out. They said we were too tall. Now, there was a lot of prejudice going on in that community, in that region where we grew up at. But anyway, we heard the gospel. We heard the story of this man named Jesus that died for the world, rose again, still alive, walked amongst the sight. We heard that. We heard the message. I don't know how my sister took it when we were kids. I know how I took it when we were kids. I said, oh, that's a good story. But it's only for the people who go to church. That's what I thought. Or oh, that's a good story. But it wasn't really for me. He didn't die for me. He died for them. That's how I, that's how I grew up thinking. And the enemy was all over that. He's like, yeah, you're right. It wasn't for you. It wasn't for you. It wasn't for you. Keep it moving. That's not That message is not for you. Don't don't connect with the church. Don't believe that message. It's, it's, it's a book. It's a fairy tale. It's a story. Yeah. He had me okie doked. Amen. He had me in the matrix. He had me deceived. He had me blind to the truth. I was blinded to the truth. And that's why um, the Bible says that the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. I don't know if I'm saying that in order. But Jesus, the gift of God, the Lord, comes to give you life and life in abundance. John 10, 10, I believe that's in there, around there. But listen, it's not God versus the devil. The devil was defeated. He was defeated a long time ago. He was kicked out of heaven. And God didn't even lift a finger. Amen. An angel kicked him out. He was banned from heaven, thrown down to this earth, and has been causing havoc ever since. Right? And he's the prince and ruler of the air, the Bible says. Uh, he's a liar, a liar from the beginning. That's why we're not supposed to engage in conversation with him. He's a liar. Amen. We speak the word. When he speaks lies in your life and over your life, when he speaks lies to me and over my life, amen, I speak the word, which is truth over my life identify with Christ. I don't identify 
with society and culture. I don't do, I don't just identify with my background and where I came from and where my family tree is from. I identify in Christ now. Amen. I was into the religion. I was into all kind of other things that were spiritual. But until I met Holy Spirit God, when he came into my heart, into my mind, I finally realized that this undeserved grace was given because he loves us. He He's the God who loves. He's the God who heals. He's the God who restores. He's the God who redeems. He's the God who sees our every need and supplies for every single one of those needs. And sometimes our wants is a bonus. If we want something and God sees it fit for us to have it, he'll give us what we want sometimes. But he will definitely give us what we need. And that all, that's all undeserved grace. All undeserved grace. Think about it. Every breath that I took yesterday and today and the breath I'm taking right now. Amen. It's all borrowed from him, the creator of life, the one who sustains life, the one who gives life and the one who takes away life. When God takes somebody home, he's not killing them. He's not murdering them. He's not punishing them. He's just showing his authority over life and death. Amen. As a matter of fact, if you're a believer in Christ, you know when you pass on, you don't really die. You just change locations from this side of eternity to the next, and you're still alive in Christ. As a matter of fact, the other end of eternity, amen, is greater than this side of eternity, just mathematically. There's a lot more years in eternity than there is and our temporary, just mathematically, amen? And God is so good that he'll always remind us of that. He sets eternity in our heart. He wrote eternity and the laws of God in our heart. Yeah, jump for joy, amen? We could do this, Sister Joanne. But we are here, and we're together, and we are the body, brothers and sisters in the Lord, coming to the word of God, humbling ourselves. This is a humbling situation for me right now, because I know in my mind, my mind is thinking, man, people think, people think I'm crazy. Not a lot of people are going to agree with this. Not a lot of people are going to receive this. That's just my mind, my carnal mind thinking, amen, the enemy trying to deceive me into believing those lies. Whoever God plants this word in, right, that word will grow in your life and in my life. All you have to do is receive this undeserved grace. Respond to grace, Right? We have a part to play in the whole salvation, the whole gospel message. We need to respond. Why wouldn't you respond? And people are responding. The people who say no, that's a response. When somebody says no to Jesus, they're responding. They're saying no to grace. They're saying no to mercy. They're saying no to love. They're saying no to faith. They're saying no to hope. They're saying no to eternal life. They're saying no to the Savior. Not really saying no to me and you when you preach the gospel to somebody and they say, nah, I'm not down with it. I've done that to people. I don't know how they felt when I was a kid. I said, nah, that's not for me. Yes, Jehovah. Amen. The Lord God Almighty, the one who is, who was, and is still to come. Amen. The God who has always been. There's never been a time in history that God has not been. There was silence according to the scriptures, according to the historical scriptures. There was silence, they say, for 300 years that God didn't speak. I don't know how we know that, amen, but a lot of theologians say that. But we have the written word. God speaks daily. He speaks all the time. He speaks um, to our hearts. He speaks to our minds. He speaks through our lives. He speaks to our lives. He works in us. He works through us. He works for us. He works um, miracle signs and wonders all through our life. We just have to respond and keep responding to his grace and understand where we are and how we got there and give God the glory. Amen. God bless you as well, brother. I thank you for coming through to the morning. Devo. I hope we have a great day. Amen. And a powerful anointed day and that you keep on moving. And thank you so much for your page that shares all the Lehigh Valley Christian events, man. That's powerful. Amen. Uh, why you do it. That's a, 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 a act of mercy and love for the community. Thank you so much for what you do. God bless you. So listen, undeserved grace amen how do you respond i'm thinking respond i'm thinking say something make a decision do something not doing something <coughs> is actually a response right we say ah i'm i'm in the middle that's actually a response you're saying i'm not going to go for it and i'm going to stay right where i'm at i'm not going to say yes i'm not going to say no i'm just stay where i'm at and that's selfishness i was like that I'm talking to myself, I'm not talking to you. I was like that. I said, nah, I'm going to stay right here. I'm not going to say yes or no to God. I'm going to stay right here and try to figure it out all by myself. 
Sister Joanne says, every morning I wake up. I don't know how I wake up. Sam, wake me up away um, to where Jeff pray, I guess. Where Jeff Higgins, the Higgins, everybody else on Raven another, and Raven another day. Um, there must be some typos there, sister, but um, praise that. Well, I'm, I'm trying to understand what you're saying. There must be some typos there. But yes, every morning we wake up and that's a gift of God, man. The alarm clock, if I don't hear my alarm on my phone, it's a huge possibility that I'll miss these sessions. Um, but I believe before the alarm clock, this is what I believe, before the alarm clock wakes me up, I believe Holy Spirit God wakes me up. You know what I mean? That's just the way I think. Because if I didn't have an alarm clock, my question would be, then how do I wake up? Why would I wake up? I think because God wakes us up every morning, every day, and he inspires us to keep on moving, keep on moving forward and continue to spread his message. This gospel message is not mine. I hope you, I know you understand that. It's the Lord's message. And he allows us, because his undeserved grace, he allows us to spread it everywhere we go. By the way we live, by the way we love one another, right? Our kindness, kindness of God leads men to repentance um, through the word, through community, through church, um, through evangelism. Amen. He inspires us to do what we do because we do it humbly, humble ourselves before God and love, um, love mercy, right? And we just love God. And we do what we do based on the love that he demonstrated for us. Now we know how to love back. If God never demonstrated his own love, we wouldn't know what true love is. And it's sacrifice in loving someone. And you take a risk by loving people, right? What time to say is that I wake up? What I'm trying to say is I wake up every morning. Go, God wakes me up and cares for another day. Okay. Amen. Praise the Lord. This is joy. Praise the Lord. But I'm out of time. Um, and I got... Some things to do. I got a breakfast um, meeting up with believers in business. All chapter morning breakfast. Amen. I just realized it was popped out on my calendar. It's today. Amen. If you want to know more about believers in business, um, inbox me. Uh, direct message me. If you have a business and you're a believer, amen, you need to connect with this community. But I'm out of here. God bless you all. God keep you all. And remember always that God is good. Peace.